So I just need y'all to get into something and give it everything you got. Something. That's what I'm saying. Yo, we can pick something today. Yeah. And maybe by next week you pick something else, but we know we got to pick, we got to get in the habit of picking something and sticking to it. Mm-hmm. And deciding, once I marry this, ain't no divorce. <laughs> You could date somebody and then it's over at them, because I'm not married to you. But in this journey to success, you gotta like practice giving something your all. Yeah. Most people never ever do that. Literally. I'm gonna do this until something else pop up. Success is inevitable. Like I thought I'd write books, I thought I'd speak. That wasn't my main thing. That's the thing that led to the thing I'm doing now. Yeah, yeah. I was just telling them that trying to figure out, okay, what I'm gonna do. I'm like, at this point, you gotta pick something. You just gotta pick something, <laughs> like <laughs> to learn the process of. And, and this might be like he said. He thought he was gonna write books. He's like, all right, I, I'm gonna write this book. But he went into it. He he went into it, and eventually he was able to elevate. And now it's like, boom! Here's what's crazy. The thing that he's married to now, he may not be married to in the next 10 years. It may be another thing, like a whole nother guest. Yeah, I want anything to drink. You want something to drink? We're going to get out and go grab something to eat in a minute. Um, but we both understand, like, evolution. You know? So he helps people right now who help people. Right, so he helping me put together my, uh, my 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 challenge strategy, launch, help me get customers, stuff like that. And though he might build a huge business and replace himself in ten years, he may be doing something that he never thought or dreamed he'd be doing. So you never know, right? But the the important part is you go into something, and like he said, you marry it. You marry it. You get married to the idea of building something and figuring it out and work and grinding it. Again, if y'all had a book right now, and maybe you weren't super passionate about it, but if you had a book right now and you asked him, hey, Marcus, how can I sell more books? He's going to give you peace. <laughs> no problem. Right? But because we're spending time trying to figure it out and we haven't done anything, our questions aren't going to be able to get the quality answers that we're looking for. So I just need y'all to get into something and give it everything you got. Something. That's what I'm saying. We can pick something today. And maybe by next week you pick something else, but we know we got to pick, we got to get in the habit of picking something and sticking to it and deciding once I marry this, ain't no divorce. (laughs) You could date somebody and then it's over after, because I'm not married to you, but in this journey to success, you gotta like practice giving something your all. Yeah. Most people never ever do that. Literally. Ever. Bro, it was twenty I was twenty-five before I gave anything my all. Wow. Like your everything? Most people would never do that. But I had someone come along and say, Hey, you gotta give something your all, you gotta stop hopping around idea to idea, stop changing your like you gotta you gotta marry something. So that's the message we're giving you today. Because you guys get to catch it earlier than we caught it. Right? <laughs> Listen, I think the dope part is, like, what we ever think about, you only get invited into rooms when you do something. Like, somebody has to make an association to not you as a person, but something that you do. Mm-hmm. Even if it's, I'll, I'll give a very good example. And I was at, with some friends of mine, I got invited to, some years ago to a Beyonce concert. And I was looking around at how early the people was there. They were doing nothing more than placing tape on the stage for placement. Like, so they'll know where to stand. They know when she's running back to change clothes. And I was like, dang, they get access. All access, because there's a color uh, language you have for each thing. All access, let me access, VIP, etc. I was like, they get access because they lay down tape. To somebody, you know, to someone that seems so insignificant. But if someone who just wanted access to the room, that's Beyonce, they don't get access. That person ain't gonna lay tape forever. The person who puts the lights up, the person who does the audio, like every person, you get in the room by figuring out something. So it might not be 
you standing on stage, it might not be you being out front. It might be you holding the light, but you show closer to the person that's standing in it. Right? So I think it's that. you. When I, I used to play basketball, I told my ACL, MCL. I just wanted to stay around the game. I worked the clock, which made me some money, but it was, I wasn't married to. It was $35 a game to sit there and watch basketball for free. I had no money and I wanted to watch basketball, so I got paid to work the club. Then I'm like, damn, how much the referees get paid? So then I started refereeing. I just found everything that made money around the thing I love. Work the clock, I refereed. Then I was like, well, shoot, now I really want to make money. So I got a contract with Navy Base in Panama City, Florida, with the Air Force Base, with Lynn Haven Rec Center, Glenwood Rec Center. Now I start hiring reps, so while I wasn't there, I was getting paid for each rep. So Let's say the contract pays 65 a game, I pay the referees 25. So I'm making 40. You get what I'm saying? But I wouldn't even thought of that if I didn't referee and if I didn't work the club. So I'd say, even if you ain't figured it out, just find something you love and find something surrounding it. Like most people I see now try to jump into music. Well, at that point, you're the talent. So you're waiting to be chosen. But if you make the beats, you ain't waiting to be chosen. People that's wanting to rap is looking out for you. So you find the thing that people have to chase you, that you become the attract the attraction of it. If Shane's in here with a pocket, he can't do nothing without sound and without lighting. So if I were trying to get into this space and be in this space, I'm going to do lighting and sound. And I'm going to sit around long enough to learn as much as possible. And it's going to be someday that he chilling. And I'm going to just ask a question and get a chance to talk. And he man, you ever thought about doing them? Is that you just you get around it? My mentor said the most powerful thing to me, guy named Anthony Andrews. He said, "You can be the worst athlete, you can be less talented, and be on the football field. And if you just stay around the ball, you are gonna get an interception. <laughs> <laughs> like you can be horrible. You can be a person don't pay attention, non skill, and it's that. Like if you just stay around successful people, stay in environments where you're always learning, where you're visible, where you're top of mind." Somebody's like, man, I wonder what... And they'll bring you, they'll mention your name in certain rooms. So even if you don't feel like you've been acknowledged in certain spaces, man, I remember. I've been in environments where I wanted to speak so bad. Like, that was my thing. I, I wanted to be a speaker. I, I was working somewhere with four years and never got a chance to do nothing. But there's no... The, my opportunity came on, on a sound check. Like, literally, they let me do sound check and I started, instead of going... One, two, one, two. I started pretending I was speaking. It was like, well, why don't you open up? <laughs> I still... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So stay around the ball, man. Like stay as clo- in, 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 in as much close proximity without attention, mm-hmm. without being invited into it. Other brother, Wall Street Trapper, he's coming up. He got, I mean, he got like a, a million followers on Instagram. But what was more important is everything he touched Everything he touches just explodes. Yeah, right. And he, like he's he's one of, he's the first person I ever heard teaching the stock market and teaching how to how your money actually makes money, right? So y'all y'all see him too. It's super super down to earth, man. This would this would have been man if I was twenty years old and I'd have got the chance to see this. God, business people or like entrepreneurs. All on wore shirts and ties and slacks and stuff like that. <laughs> I never even met one that wore a hoodie. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, I got, I got to change into so I got to be something different, right? And um, this day and age, you really get to see people who have just figured some stuff out. But it was, it was all my like trial and error. So I'm gonna ask the question one more time: If we can come up with something that uh, that people would enjoy and you would enjoy selling it, what would you sell? Product, service. I would say a toy. A toy? Okay. But toy. like, not like something like a fidget spinner, mm-hmm. but not not so complex as a fidget spinner. So it's like, what if you had a, what if you had a, a pocket, something that's like a pocket puzzle. So it's mm-hmm. like, you have it in your hand, but it helps with like stress, helps with anxiety. Um, it just helps with people who moves around a lot. So, you know, or I could say um, if I had like a, a tracking device. So if 
I know that peop, uh, normal human being forgets a thousand things a day. So, you know, what if you lose your phone? Or what if you lose anything and you have two things or you have like a little keychain to where all you have to do is press a click of a button and it can track where, wherever you lost something or anything like that. So, you know, something like that. All right, listen, every single week, every episode, you hear me talking about the morningmeetup.com. It's the community. Let me show you what's happening here. Every single morning, Monday through Friday, there's 400 plus people on a Zoom call, right? We're learning, we're talking, we're growing together, and this is you. There's all these people here. It's all these people in the morning meetup. Hundreds of people reading books, growing, we get together quarterly. It's amazing. And for some reason, you just keep looking at, just go to themorningmeetup.com and get in the circle. And then you'll be like way happier. Just the morning meetup.com. Let's get back to the episode. Okay. Let me show you uh, how uh, entrepreneurs think. So we can go. I would probably go to a website like this Alex Chris. But this is like a place where you can get like cheap little trinkets or whatever. Mm hmm. Let's say a uh, stress reliever. I've never done this before, so. So, to do, 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 do. stress reliever toys for dogs. I have over no, another no, map. Stress reliever toys. It's the same under 18. Just be safe. All right, so there is a website for all of this. New fidget toys. You ever seen these before? Yeah. What are they do? It's these like little little fidget something out of your hand to play with. Yeah. Right. So, Mar, did you see this little fidget toy thing? Wow. Well, you can get this for 93 cents on this website, right? Jeez. What would you do with this one? I don't know what it is. It's a stress reliever. I guess you press it and play with it and fidget with it and it relieves stress. Or yeah. Oh shoot! Uh, you know, you know me. I'm wrapping a story around it. Example. Yo, really? It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter what the thing is. Mm -hmm. Especially I was selling them. They're twenty. It doesn't matter what you sell. No. Try it, what up? What's that? What's that? Hey, what's that's up? how you felt, the client. How you felt? What's good? Hey, get how them. Felt what's good? <laughs> <laughs> you feel like a screwdriver? What's good? What's good? What's and I like how I get my hands on one of those sweatsuits. I mean, just come to the spot. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm over here rocking the sensor. You can rock my people. So I don't wear nothing but this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This boy, he won't let me buy no social from every time I see you. I know I say the same thing. I'm trying to get my sisters together. <laughs> but, but Trent, uh, introduce yourself. Stop looking at my shoes, I already bro. told him I like them. <laughs> yeah. you get, it, it, did you get buy them out of the store or they cut some? Now, you know, Nike made these specifically for New Orleans. Really? Yep. They made them specifically for New Orleans, bro. You know. Because we the only people in the world that call them g Nike. <laughs> the word. Yeah. I never heard it. It's all in the water. Everybody else calling like forces. Uh, or G phases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in the water is the only place like calling G Nike. There's been G Nike since like the 80s. You know what I'm saying? So they, they, they shot us out. You know? I'm sorry to talk a little bit about, about you, man, but I was just yeah. trying to share your own story. Oh, uh, man. So how old are y'all? 20. 20? 20. Um, at 20, I was doing, I was still, I was four years in on a 10 year prison sentence at 20. At 20? At 20. Four years in. I was four years in on a, on a on a 10 year prison sentence for a 10 murder. At, at 16, I went to prison for a 10 murder. Um, I came home when I was 26. So we think about hardships, man. Like I, I probably don't, probably don't everything you can think about when it comes to hardship. Right, so we talking being homeless, and I'm not talking about like the Instagram homeless. Well, it's, it's dope to say I was homeless. I'm talking about really like my mama went to prison when I was 
14. My grandmother passed when I was 13. And I'm not saying that none of my family didn't love me, but they had their own issues going on. So nobody had room to take in me. So I was put in a situation where I had to just feel your life out at a young age, man. You know what I'm saying? So abandonment comes in, but you don't really know it's called abandonment. It's survival. Right. And so from sleeping in abandoned cars, sleeping in abandoned houses, I was just telling a friend of mine the other day, I one time I went to a thrift store and I bought this insulated doghouse. Right. Kind of looks like an igloo. Um, and I bought it and I put it inside the abandoned house because it was warm. And I bought the blankets out the thrift store. I was around 15 at this time. Going to prison at 16 was another adjustment for me. Right. Learning now how to navigate amongst grown men. And so that was another adjustment. And so then fighting the idea of like, damn, nobody understood me. Fighting the idea that, you know, what, I'm, what this is lonely. Asking myself, uh, like, what is love? Seeing my mama put like the streets before me, not not because she didn't love me, but she had other things that she was dealing with, right? So I be so that was a byproduct of all of those certain situations. Um, never knowing my pop, and I think on the first episode I did with Shans, we talked about I was met with a situation probably when I was about thirty. Um, the guy who was my father said, I wanted to meet you. And then I had a decision to make, right? He was on his deathbed. So I had a decision to make, um, and I, I chose not to meet him. Um, some people say it was bad. Some people say they understand. But for me in the moment, I felt like I didn't want to open myself up to that type of vulnerability. You know what I'm saying? Because I had a kid, I had my daughter, and I was learning how to properly be a father to her. You know what I'm saying? So environment is so important to me now because being around the right people helps me navigate my own thoughts, my own insecurities, um, my own emotional um, defaults. Right. So being able to come to somebody like a David Shans and watch him navigate fatherhood, entrepreneurship, husbandry, business, really like coming to him like, hey, bro, like what's your what do you think about this? Right. And sometimes he'll be like, I don't know, trap. But in him saying, I don't know, it doesn't make him lesser of a man because he don't know. And it doesn't make me feel insecure about myself because he don't know. But I know. There was a point in my life when I, if I didn't know the answer, I felt like I was dumb. Or I felt like, you know, you know, I questioned who I was. And so, man, navigating at 20 years old, man, I just think about being at 20, you know, me sleeping in a cell with a, with a, but I would, at 20, I was upstate. So me sleeping next to a dude who got 99 years, me sleeping next to another dude who got 250 years, me sleeping next to a dude across from me who probably has 175 years and none of us over the age of 21. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, man. And so for me to be in a position I'm in now, um, I love being able to sh talk about that, how it's still a healing process for me. You know what I'm saying? Like how I'm still learning how to love my mother. Like I got to let go of some of the traumas that I felt that she was responsible for. You know what I'm saying? And I'm 40, right? And so it's sometimes my mom must send me something and I'll cringe, like, mm. you know what I'm saying? But it's learning how to let that go. Like, nah, bro, that's not it. And so for me, I made a post this morning on Instagram about learning how to love. Um, and I think that we grow up um, not knowing how to truly express how we feel. And then sometimes we can go to the wrong places and we go to the wrong environments to express that love. And then even those who are expressing that love to haven't felt love. You know what I'm saying? And so it's not easy being a black man growing up in America, but I can tell you that I wouldn't want to be nothing else. <laughs>
You know what I'm saying? Because if I look at our track record, we built for this. We built for it. And I think for y'all, it's important that you be in the right environment. Um, it's seeing the right images, right? It's, it's hearing the people talk the right language. You know what I'm saying? Because I ain't have it. Everybody, the reason why it was so easy for me to pick up a gun at 16 because at nine I saw my mama get shot. And the people around me, violence was the regulator. That was how you fix every situation that didn't go your way. If, if somebody wasn't feeling you, or if you felt threatened by somebody, the best thing to do is shoot them. That was the regulator. And so because that was normal, it became my normal. You feel what I'm saying? So my environment played a huge role on how I saw life, how I dealt with adversity, how I dealt with women, what I thought respect was. And it wasn't until later on I started evolving and saying like, damn, that, that was wrong. That wasn't, that wasn't the right way to go about that situation, right? Conflict resolution is, is a big thing. Like for us, anger is probably our most frequently visited emotion, anger. You know what I'm saying? Like lashing out. And it's so many, it's so many levels that we have to peel back to understand why are we so angry? Why do you feel misunderstood? Do you feel like you misunderstood sometimes? You feel me? You feel me? Do you feel like you misunderstood sometimes? Right? And so it's, it's, it's peeling that back to ask myself, why do I feel misunderstood? Right? And sometimes it's kind of, and you don't always know how to express it. And so you revert to anger. You, and then that navigates you and leads you to situations where you feel comfort. So if you feel misunderstood and then you feel misunderstood, it's easy for y'all to have what's called a trauma bond because y'all feel like y'all understand each other. Y'all understand, I understand your pain, you understand my pain, and now we leading with pain. We leading with anger, right? And there's nobody to disrupt that, that train of thought. There's nobody to disrupt that feeling saying, nah, yo, let me understand you then. Tell me what's wrong. Let's talk about it. And now it forces you to dig deep and say, damn, why am I angry? But now it's being able to explain your anger Explain the hurt, explain the pain without being judged. And that's the hard part for us. The hard part is the vulnerability. I don't want to look weak. Everything I know is about me being strong. Everything we know is about is me being like, what? Don't, man, don't play with me. Right? So it's being able to say, all right, yo, let me. All right, let me. And now that means now I got to be in a safe environment where I feel like my vulnerability won't be used against me. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's, it's, it's being able to, and I know it, it may sound like a lot, but where you are right now is going to be so important to where you are in 10 years. And I say that because there was a distinct moment in my life. For me, it was when, when I had my daughter. That was the biggest turning point in my life. Because at that point, I realized, damn, she deserved a better version of me. She deserved to grow up with her daddy. She deserved not to come see me behind a glass or touching me for an hour at a table. And so I reverted back to experiences that I had. I remember in doing a 10 year bed, bro, I had two visits, no lie. That, that in itself was hurtful to me. That in itself, at 16, I'm in prison and I only had two visits my whole 10 year stretch. I went through phases of asking myself, damn, my family don't love me. <laughs> like, damn, like, I ain't worth a, a visit. You feel what I'm saying? But it, I remember being in those visits, those two visits, and I remember and watching some men that I knew, cold, stone bone killers, coming back to the tear crying. And like, damn, but like, why are you crying? Like, I know you in here for two bodies. Like, dog, like, I'm leaving my family. I'm 
my child will never see. He got 150 years. He 18. He just had a child. His child will never see him in a free world. You feel what I'm saying? Like, that's the part that nobody don't talk about, right? That's the part that people miss. And so it's watching him and, and then watching that so many different times. Because no matter how gangster you is, no, how, no matter how human you is, no matter how tough you is, when you know you leaving your child, or when you know you leaving, like I've watched my, some of my homies leave their they wives, and like, bro, she'll never, I'll never touch her again. I'll never hug her again. I can never guide her. So now the same people who you said you was protecting them from, you just made them vulnerable too. You feel me? And so that that for me, when I had my daughter, it was a situation where I said, you know, like again, experience is gonna paint the picture for you of what your future gonna be, or how you judge life. Your experience is always gonna paint that picture for you. And for me, it was vivid. It was vivid. It was like, nope, I don't want her to come see me behind a prison cell. I don't want her to come see me. You know, I don't want to have, I don't want that. I want to be involved from beginning to end. And so I had to make an adjustment fast. I had to do, man, I was scared. I was scared to go get a job, man. What is that? You know what I'm saying? Man, I get a job, man. People going to call me broke. Because nobody who I knew that had a job was like thriving. They was hurting. But I had to ask myself, would I rather be looked at as broke or whatever to somebody and be here for my child or be selfish enough to say I'm hustling, I'm doing this for my child, but the same thing that I say I'm doing it for is now being has the power to take me away from her. You know what I'm saying? And so you, you're not going to always get it right. I'm not going to say I always, I still make bad decisions, right? But it's the mindset I'm in now to make the bad decision, like, oh, this is adjustment I gotta make. Like, you gonna always, you learning, man. You 20, man. Y'all, man, you learning. And, and the world gonna keep evolving. Y'all got it a little worse than me because social media now plays such an impactful role on y'all life. You, you can't escape it. You can't escape it. So you got it a little tougher than me because I didn't have, my influences were always in my face, like right here in person. I never got on, I never was able to pick up the phone and see a bunch of people who probably not as successful as I think I, I think they are, show me a life that shows they are successful. You know what I'm saying? Like you looking at a highlight reel of everybody life every day, you like, damn. That's, so that's a whole different type of pressure that I don't know what that feels like as a 20 year old. You know what I'm saying? But what I will say is you have to find a way to ground yourself around like, who am I? What's your name? Am I like, who is or am I? What's your name? I'm, who is, who am I? You know what I'm saying? What does a successful life look like to me? No matter what it is, what does happiness like tr really look like to me? Like, what does it feel like to, like I'm 40, yo, I'm just learning how to love myself. I'm keeping it real with you. I'm 40, I've made millions of dollars. I'm just learning how to love myself. The money ain't make me love myself. All that stuff made me more depressed. It made me more depressed because I went and bought all the stuff I thought I could buy and it made me feel good in a minute and then I was like, damn, that ain't it. I don't even need this. I'm, I'm just keeping it real with you. You feel me? For example, I just bought a house. I'm in the basement. Y'all said they're putting the gym together. Like, yup, this probably going to be my biggest spot right here. I'm going to just be in the basement working out. Thing got a movie theater, office space, pool outside. It's an amazing house. It's my first house. It's amazing. I'm literally in there yesterday like, man, who the hell? I could have just kept my condo. Maybe got three bedrooms. Could have kept the pen. Like, who going to be here? You feel what I'm saying? So the money... I'm not going to tell you don't go get the money. I'm not telling you don't be inspired to get it. But it makes more sense when you understand who you are, when you understand what makes you love yourself, what makes you happy. Now you can properly use the money to put yourself in a safe space. You feel I me? Mean? And I can tell you I'm, I wasn't truly in a safe space because why I said as soon as I bought the house, I bulletproofed the whole house. The trauma of what I've been through still... There's a residue of trauma, what I've been through that, 
And I can justify like, man, look, man, stuff real out here. I just want to protect me and my family. But I really did it because what I've been through in my life still plays a role on how I move, how I operate. Right. But I'm still learning how to find peace in myself. I'm still learning how to love myself. I'm still learning how to navigate. He ain't gonna never stop that. But I ain't had nobody to tell me that until I started being around, you know, seeing him. Like we had a conversation maybe a couple weeks ago. We was in there. You talking about love? Like you know, I'm dealing with this this queen man, and she did this, and you know, I'm not dating a bunch. I'm only dating her, but I don't know how I feel about this. I'm coming to my married friend. You know what I'm saying? I'm coming to my other friend. I'm yo, tell me. They like, well, you know, but it's being able to have a constructive, healthy conversation from men I admire. Now, if I go ask somebody who ain't never been married, I can ask somebody who ain't never been in a healthy relationship. Oh, man, they got a bunch of women out here, man. You go, don't be worrying about that, man. Man, you trip. Now I'm getting bad advice from somebody who ain't never, you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, man, that's whatever I could do. You know, Shaz, help me. I'm going to pull up. Uh, yeah, we're about, we're about to go grab. If you like the video that you just watched, click this one. You're going to like this one, maybe even more. Click it right now.